This is a unit I put in for a customer uh, last November. It's a Goodman unit, 14 to 15 seer. And uh, he's got a line set that's kind of long, and I elected not to add any more charge to it because it was the winter time. It was just too cold to check the charge. And uh, sight glass looks okay. I put sight glasses in any installation I do just to help me out. See if I've got moisture in there. I've got my uh, hoses and probes hooked up for my superheat and subcool measurements. And you can see we're running a uh, low subcooling should be 7 to 9 degrees. And our superheat should be 7 to 9 degrees. This is a TXV system. R410A. So I'm going to add a little bit of gas to this and top off the charge. We've got to go in as a liquid on the low side, of course, because this is a blended refrigerant. And I've added, as an added safety measure, I've got a special adapter on here that'll let this come out as a gas at a controlled rate so I don't slug the compressor. So I've got the suction side wide open, and now I can start tweaking my refrigerant valve and start adding some charge and I can keep track of how much charge we have to add because what I can do is I can record that and um, get the total system charge added together off the uh, nameplate if I've got to pull the whole charge out of here again I know uh, roughly how much to add back in here it'll be the factory charge plus whatever I have to add in uh, today. So we'll go ahead and start tweaking it. Start adding some gas. And I've stopped there. And I'm just going to add gas a little bit at a time. And as I do, the subcooling should go up and the superheat should go down. We're looking between 7 to 9 on both of these values. This is the temperature of the refrigerant leaving the evaporator, vapor saturation temperature. You want to make sure that's uh, a little over 32. It looks like it's a little bit high right now. And this is our condensing temperature. It's about 82 degrees outside right now. You can see our subcool is climbing up just a little bit even though I've stopped adding charge. And that's why it's so easy to overcharge these things. It's easy just to let this valve stay open until you get the right value. But it takes a long time for everything to settle down, and you can easily add more gas than you need. So I'm going to go ahead and continue playing with this, and we'll see what the final numbers come out to be. I think I'm, think I'm happy with these numbers. I've got the subcool dialed in pretty close. Superheat's still a little high according to specification, but that might just be a TXV adjustment that uh, I can optionally do if the uh, cooling performance isn't where it needs to be. But you can definitely see the uh, thermal expansion valve in operation as it modulates open to closed. As the subcooling goes up, that implies a TXV is closing off, causing refrigerant to, more refrigerant to back up in the condenser, and the superheat should also go up. And as the subcooling goes down, the expansion valve is opening up a little bit more, and the superheat should go down as well too. So these two numbers are critical, and they're directly related to each other, and you can kind of see the relationship as the subcooling varies between about 7.5 to 8.5, although it looks like it's settling down right about now. We're evaporating at about 44 degrees, and condensing at around 94 degrees. So I'm going to call this good. I'm going to go in there and check the temperatures of the ducts and everything. And uh, call it a day. 
This number is staying between 7 and 9, which is what it's supposed to do. And looks like I had to add about 7.5 ounces, 7.4 ounces. So it wasn't really too far off, and it didn't take a lot to uh, bring these specifications within range. And I guess that's it, because my meter just shut off on me. Power saving. Gotta love it. There we go. Yep, think that's going to be good.